Let's go. Atlanta, the Matt Shaw, Russell Wilson Bowl. But first, it was these guys, Pete and Dan Quinn. Look at that. They have a great relationship going back to the Seattle days. There's Matt Ryan right there. He'd be out. Matt Shaw would come in and play actually really well. Really? We had 460 yards. It was great. amazing. Did what you told him to. Let it go. <laughs> he let it go. He had one more awesome. game, and he did it. But it would be a big comeback from them. But first, Seattle got up big early. 24 to nothing. Here's Russell Wilson. Just put it up. Touchdown. They would go up huge. Falcons would come all the way back, but it wouldn't be enough. 27 to 20. Seahawks win again. All right, here we go. Panthers. Nine. Here's Cam Newton. He's warming up for the game. He didn't play, though. You know who did play? Jimmy Garax. The Niners starting 7 and 0 for the first time since 1990. And my guy, Kevin Cole, looking like a running back out of 1990. Is that Roger Craig right there? Looks like Roger Man, he was out there doing his thing. Look at Kittle out there having the ball. Remember when Kyle Allen didn't throw an interception? Yep. Well, guess what? That is all changed. Oh. You know who picked it off? Bosa. Nicholas Bosa, who was an absolute boa constrictor because he was smothering oh. that quarterback. I'll tell you what, these Niners are for real. I won't doubt them for a minute. The Panthers, they lose big to the Niners. 51 to 30. They got absolutely throttled. The Niners are incredible. Are they the best team in the NFC? How about Drew Brees? He has not played since week two. Thumb injury. Superdome obviously thrilled to have him back, but there was some of this maybe take another week. It's the Cardinals let Teddy play. Third quarter, the Cardinals came to fight it 10-6, to six, and we got a Patrick Peterson interception. His first one since returning from suspension. He gets the play. Peter said that the Cardinals organization loves Patrick Peterson. Never mind all the trade talk. He's going to But how about this? The Cardinals said to go for it on fourth and one from their own 30. And hell no, ah. Edmonds. 10 to 6. You run the ball up the gut with Chase Edmonds. On fourth and one. And they get absolutely stuck. It was a strange call. Now, that was it. I remember him. He's an awesome player, Kay, but he's been out for a while. And how good is Latavius Murray? Guys, he's I been a revelation for them. Watch the replay of this. Watch the move that he makes in space against da, 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 and Radic. Da, da, da. And he's wide open. Don't think that he is just a plotter up the middle. This is a great, great talent who comes in for Alvin Kamara, and they don't miss a beat. Latavius was fantastic yesterday, as he has been for about a month. One of our best friends He's going to give his review on the latest uh, Adam's Family animated movie. He loves the cartoons. And there's Taysom Hill. We know about him. Guys, another touchdown for him. We're also going to get him downfield. You want some more Taysom Hill? Because I know Drew Brees does. A little play action with Latavius. And there's, of course, number seven running free in the secondary. Whoa! Whoa! I would say see you tomorrow, but I don't know if there's room with the angry runs in. It's a crowded week. Guys, one more time and can't guard Mike who is having a prolific season for a prolific team. In my opinion, the best wide receiver in the NFL, Michael Thomas, 31-9. to Cardinals hung around, then Peter's right. The strange fourth and one up the middle of the game was yeah. over. But, guys, Drew Brees came back like it was nothing, 373-3. and three. Let's hear from number nine on his return. Another thought would be, hey, why don't you just, why don't you just wait until after the bye week, you know? Um, um, Everything seems to be going well, right? You know, and, and so why, why take the chance? Um, man, I'm a football player, <laughs> you know? And I, uh, like I said, just that, that gratitude that, that kind of um, came over me right before this game um, is, is just that I'm, I'm blessed to play this game, and I love this game, and I love my teammates. I'm convinced that him missing these five games was the best thing that could happen for this team. 373 yards. He hasn't done that since week three of last year. Last year, the only critique you could have about Drew Brees is that down the stretch, he had a little bit of what looked like potentially some arm fatigue. I personally didn't subscribe to that. Maybe he struggled towards the end of the year. The way that he looked off the bench with a wrap still on his thumb, putting up those numbers, leading his team to this win, I think it's awesome. Yeah, last week I said it was a blessing in disguise for the simple fact that he could sit on the sideline, rest his legs up, rest his shoulder up, rest that thumb up, and then come back and be the most well-rested quarterback, not to mention a future Hall of Famer. He was out there just like he said, if I can grip it and rip it, then I can play. What I love about this team is they're showing variety. And Schrager, you talked about this over the last couple of years. With the individuals that they bring in on this roster, they're not shy about putting different guys in different places in pressure moments. So for me, this team is picking up where Drew Brees left off. And like you said, Kyle, this could be the scariest in football. Yeah, Jay Glazer, as I said that on Monday, Drew Brees walked into Sean Payton's office and is like, I'm playing. And, mm -hmm. and Payton was like, oh, okay, like I can't. 
Now look at the alternative thing. Say Teddy started yesterday, right? Say Teddy started yesterday, they went 27 to nothing and going into the bye week. Now we're dealing with Breeze or Teddy? Breeze or Teddy? What are we going to do? Oh, how can you take out Teddy? He won a sixth straight game. Mm -hmm. No conversation. Drew Brees is our quarterback. I almost think it was a master play by the Saints. Throw out Drew Brees. Let him show the fans. Oh, wait, I'm still Drew Brees. That's not a storyline. Teddy, thank you. You're there on the bench if we need you. Drew Brees, take us to the Super Bowl and go win the another one. Like, that's what they did, and they just silenced the narrative. Coach Brees said, I I'm in. I'm, Coach Brees said on Monday, and I think Sean Payton respects Brees enough. It was like, yeah, I know. You're Drew Brees. Like, yeah. you're in. If he you want to be in, you're he in. He is in. And like, I, I don't do the power rankings on the show. Dan Hans a stud and Peter's fight my five. I think this is the best team in the NFL. I really do because. I can't find a flaw. Like, the Niners, the Niners have that. They haven't been there before, all right? The Patriots, they're putting it together on the fly offensively. I just don't see anything with the Saints. They already dealt with the big injury. The defense is incredible. Even off the field, like, the home field advantage and the been there factor. And the, if they just have it all going on, can you look at this team and find anything about, yeah, but they don't really have the I, – I think it's like a perfect team. Two big injuries. I mean, Kamara, yeah. we didn't even talk about it. You're right. Kamara's out. Jared Cook was out. Breeze is out. And they're just flawless. I think they're the best team in the NFL right now. I, I, as much as I love what the Niners did yesterday, it's just all Saints for me. I love Washington them. Washington deserves so too. much credit. For they got it all. Concerned. They didn't weather the storm without Drew Brees. They thrived in They were awesome. Yeah. yeah. They were, and they were and Lieutenant Dan. And you they call might, this a storm? They might not be done. Tuesday's a trade deadline. The Saints are one of those teams that are always looking to add assets. Let's Jesus. go! Let's go, let's go! They're always listening, I'll tell you that. Yeah. They're always watching. That Candle wax, that, Peter. Uh, Will Selva's <laughs> out in the newsroom in Culver City this morning with all of our headlines. 24 hours into the trade deadline. 24 hours. Absolutely. Station, 4 PM and we are going to be documenting every bit of it. Good morning to UK. Good morning, fellas. Well, after Sunday's loss to the Seahawks, the Falcons are now 1-7. Now, here's a sobering stat that really just reinforces what most Atlanta fans already knew. No team has made the playoffs following a 1-7 start start in NFL history and what's worse the last two Falcons head coaches to miss the playoffs in consecutive seasons were fired in the offseason Mike Smith and Jim Mora Jr. both defensive minded coaches just like Dan Quinn Quinn seeing the Seahawks go off for 130 rushing yards in the first half as they trail 24 to nothing if it ultimately leads to Quinn's downfall, it depends on owner Arthur Blank and his evaluation. You know, I'm extraordinarily disappointed um, in the season. Uh, nobody would have anticipated 1-7. And, seven. Um, and uh, you know, the lack of consistency. And today was a prime example of that. And down 24 nothing. If we can just play the second half, we would have won the game. But it didn't work out. So um, we'll take the next couple of weeks um, during this by period of time and uh, evaluate where we are. And, you know, whatever decision we have to make will be made for the right reasons for the long term. Well, we've had the chance to evaluate Niners rookie Nick Bosa, and thus far all he's shown is that he's the front runner for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Three sacks, a pick, and the blowout win over the Panthers. Bosa had seven sacks on the season. Teammate Richard Sherman knew he was capable of this production because he sees it every day in practice. You know, he didn't get to play the preseason. Everybody's like, oh, my God, he's the number two pick. He hasn't played. But when he came in here, if you if you watched him from day one like we got to, he plays like a 10-year vet. He plays with, with such a savviness and such a such a poise, such an aggression that it, it's like he's been playing, like he's been playing on this level. So you can tell he's, he's been coached up great at a young age. Obviously, his family is a great pedigree, but he's an incredible talent, and he's so humble. You know, if he if he just kept the stat line as it is right now, he could win Rookie of the Year. But right now, he should be in the in line for defense MVP. Well, at 22 years and four days old, Nick Bosa is the second youngest player to record at least three sacks in a single game since 1982. Only Vernon Maxwell was younger at 21 years, 321 days old. No, not the NBA's Vernon Maxwell. This Maxwell had three sacks in a game against the Broncos for the Baltimore Colts in 1983. So that is something I wow, haven't we seen in a long time. Yeah. Okay. If we were to come up with a theme song potentially for Nick Bosa right now, we could easily use Queen, which I know that you love, and We Will Rock yes. You, and We Are the Champions, Absolutely. or Another Stop One now. Bites the I'll Dust, all of those. And I bring that up 
Will, because you and I love music. Everybody here at the table does. Everybody watching does. So I have a really cool announcement to make. The NFL uh, has a launch this week of the unique content experience. You're hearing some of it right now. And it's available on a variety of music streaming platforms. It's through the NFL's page uh, or channel on these platforms. And you can now access some of the game's greatest moments from throughout history, plus game previews. You can see highlights, podcasts, music playlists from your favorite players, teams, and even shows like Good Morning Football favorite uh, tracks. This is champion from, from our guy. This is Sash? Yeah. I love it. All of the playlists as well. All of the great NFL content can be found on digital streaming platforms including Pandora, TuneIn, Tidal, and more. Visit NFL.com slash hub for easy access to this all new experience. What do you guys think? I like that. I think about doing a remix for the Patriots. What do you got? When will the champions lose? <laughs> That's good. Oh, when will the champions lose? That's the one? And it's all like stuff that we like and everything? The Good Morning Football Weekend song we learned is from SZA. Uh-huh. And it's my favorite song. It's the one we run on the promo for Good Morning Football Weekend. If we could stream it now, I will just listen to that. While I take the subway all day long, I'm in. Can I get you during commercial break singing Salisbury Hill, Peter? Yes, Peter Gabriel. Peter, <laughs> Peter Gabriel. Awesome. You want That's his it. rendition. I do. His you know what? On Saturday nights, I sit there with my wife. We go through Netflix trying to find a movie or something. Yeah. They're all terrible. It's all these dumb Gerard Butler movies I've never heard of. I need a new service like this. This is what I'm in for. Let's go. go. Check it out. Okay. Nate, we got Terrible. our highlights up next. Um, how do you rate this fair catch on a fancy Can I show you this? Yeah. yeah. What you got here, Did you catch? see this? And. 